The motion be agreed to. I call the Honourable Chris Farpoy. Uh, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to speak to the Statutes Amendment Bill No. 2. Um, if anyone has tuned in this morning to a fierce debate about this bill, and they'll be bitterly disappointed, obviously, um, because of the uh, non-technical and non-controversial uh, manner uh, in which uh, these bills implement changes to legislation. Uh, in plain English, uh, it's a, a housekeeping exercise uh, for the parliament to make sure uh, any errors of a small nature um, that may have been put in legislation are uh, cleaned up every so often as um, uh, they are found either by the government or by officials or by people who are uh, looking at the laws closely. So uh, I would like to take a concise and precise short call um, uh, looking at two of the acts that come under my purview as the Minister of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. Um, the first one is extremely technical, uh, Madam Speaker, and that is part six, which um, pertains to the Companies Act. Um, we're at, um, looking at um, clauses 303 and 308, uh, which are about creditors' claims uh, over companies that have gone into liquidation. Uh, and if I go to the correct page here, um, it is, in essence, inserting a, a handful of words uh, into clause uh, 3032, um, penalties and inserting sentences of reparation orders, uh, which I believe, um, having read the clause here this morning um, in the Act as it stands at the moment, uh, will open up uh, a lot more options for people who are looking to get um, redress from companies that have gone into liquidation uh, and a subsequent uh, amendment to section 308 of the Companies Act um, as a result of the change to 303. Um, the substantive change I wanted to, to speak to is part 8 of the Statutes Amendment Act uh, before us today, uh, and that is an, a very small amendment to the Credit Contracts uh, and Consumer Finance Act of 2003. And that amends a cross heading in uh, section 9J and simply uh, inserting the words disclosure of, um, which might sound mundane, but I'd quite like to talk about 9J because I was a member of the Commerce Select Committee when the previous government amended the Triple CFA. Uh, and the member who spoke before me, I think, was also a member of the Commerce Select Committee uh, when we looked to change. Uh, the triple CFA and 9J was one that I think, if I remember correctly, um, that the New Zealand Bankers Association were quite motivated about making sure that they understood exactly where things were in terms of disclosure of standard um, loan arrangements, which had to be displayed prominently um, for the benefit of customers. Uh, and the argument that was being made at the time um, by those who were concerned about 9J was that they'd essentially have to plaster. Uh, loan agreements uh, on the walls of bank branches uh, to make sure that they could adhere to 9J. Um, I guess uh, we know in hindsight that that didn't happen, um, but at the time there was a bit of concern about a number of the changes uh, that the previous government was making to the Consumer Contracts, um, Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Act. Um, they certainly didn't make changes of this nature, which I think were uh, certainly technical um, and we're kind of slightly amending uh, that today. I don't think there's anything bigger than that. Um, but I think uh, certainly at the time they missed some amendments um, that we are now addressing as a result of the government's review of the triple CFA uh, and the harm that uh, is still continuing to be done in our communities by predatory lending, uh, the likes of mobile trucks, um, and certainly um, a clean up of the triple CFA as it stands now to ensure that some of the work that I think, for certainly some of the members who might have been on that committee, were keen to do, but um, the higher ups were not. Um, and, Madam Chair, I'm talking about the likes of this government being completely open and transparent about looking at measures of introducing interest rate caps. So, those vulnerable consumers who the government failed to protect, the previous government failed to protect back in 2014. Uh, when it changed the triple CFA, who have continued to be preyed upon uh, by predatory lenders in our communities, have increased protection uh, from those predatory lenders, something that should have happened uh, five years ago um, but was not done by the previous government. And since then, New Zealanders and those vulnerable consumers, such as mine, uh, and spread around the country, have continued to be preyed upon uh, by those predatory lenders. So I make no apologies uh, to those in the industry 
who have continued to fly in the face of the laws and the lack of their um, boldness back in 2014 to protect New Zealanders um, from predatory lenders, that their days are numbered because, uh, as well as measures that we will take as a result of the Credit Contracts uh, and Consumer Finance Act review, uh, a lot of the work that was done um, in terms of the forum last week where uh, community organisations, uh, the government and the finance sector are coming together to ensure there are safe places uh, for those vulnerable consumers uh, to lend, and increasing the financial capability and the wisdom of financial decisions to be made uh, by New Zealand families, bringing those three parts of this triangle together will in fact help those people who have been preyed upon and were left by the previous government to be continued to be preyed upon by their lack of courage to amend the triple CFA in a way that made sure those in the most vulnerable um, parts of our country were protected. So I'm proud uh, that we are making that action and obviously acknowledge the very minor change uh, to 9J in the triple CFA it is today. But uh, just a, a note of caution to those who are in the community who have um, taken shelter and the lack of change from the previous government with the triple CFA, that change is on the way and the shelter will no longer be there. I call Brett Hudson. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to take my feet to speak on the, actually to speak on the statutes amendment bill.